The 6.5 is on the road here in Barcelona, Spain at Mobile World Congress 2024. We are in the Lenovo booth. Dan, MWC is back. I could barely get through the hallways of Hall 3 where we are right now yesterday. And I don't remember, I don't know, maybe five years ago uh, it was like this. Yeah, we're, we're, we're back to full steam, Pat. And, and look, this show is, is sort of the epicenter of the way the world works. I mean, look, sometimes we want to be all cloud centric. And over the last 12 months, it's been well, 18 months. It's been like AI is the only thing in focus. But as you're walking around, whether device, you know, you've got the watch, you've got the, the, the pad, you've got right. the, the phone. We got to connect that. Like, and by the way, we don't have Wi-Fi everywhere. So this show is all about connecting the world and bringing all the applications, the ones that we're talking about in the future, those goggles that everyone's wearing around town now, or just being on your smartphone, being able to connect with your friends on Meta, Instagram, Facebook, WhatsApp. This is the show where all the companies around the world come and talk about how to make that possible, make that scalable, make that accessible. So yeah, we're back, but were we ever really gone? Uh, not really. The other thing that dawned on me in a lot of my our conversations is how much the architecture of this ecosystem, which goes from the endpoint all the way to the core network, uh, has become very similar, right? We're talking containers, we're talking VMs, we're talking edge compute, we're talking public cloud, private cloud, and of course, uh, AI. And it's with that, I'm going to introduce our guest, Kirk Skaugen. Great to see you again. Good Gosh. To see you. I feel like chronicling the success that you guys have had has been a lot of fun. Uh, we were there, I feel like at the very beginning, a lot of doubters uh, who came in, but we get our quarterly update with you. Uh, we do a lot of briefings with you, and it's really been a pleasure uh, to do that. Last year, one of our day opening keynotes no, at no, the 6.5 no. Summit here. I mean, this is this is a legend of the 6.5. Yeah, 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 I, yeah it's I, exactly him. By the way, I was just going to say, you know what, you know what my, uh, co you know, everyone drinks coffee every day, I, you know, of course, if you're normal. And, um, you, you know, you, you, I have my little coffee hold mug, you know, the, 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 you hold it on and it says success is the best revenge. So you said yeah. if there's any doubters out there every single day, success is the best revenge. And totally. I think, you know, in our conversations, watching the success of your business and the infrastructure group, I think that's kind of how you're running it. You're like, Heads down, build it, grow it, and you know if there are doubters, you know success. Yeah. Well, this is a great show. I mean, I was uh, talking to one of the people that put this event on last night, and 50% of the attendees now are really outside the tech industry. They're people that are out figuring out how to make their businesses more productive and efficient with you know folks like us in the technology industry. But that was a surprising statistic to me. That is interesting. It's funny, surprising, not surprising, is that with all the heat and light that's on the edge and the ability for whether you're in manufacturing, retailer, or whatever on the edge, you're finding new ways to monetize that. Yeah. Or if, if you're into you know lowering your costs, you can do that too. Yeah, so I mean, I've had multiple days now talking to some of the largest telecommunication companies in the world, and we all know data's doubling and 75% of that computes moving to the edge. So probably after years of kind of tire kicking, this whole concept of AI at the edge right. to take AI to the, you know, uh, to the data is really becoming the core of most of the conversations here. And you probably know, what was it, three, four years ago, we moved five different divisions into one at Lenovo so that the management and orchestration of all these devices, whether you're a very low end compute all the way up to a multi GPU server, right. um, can all be orchestrated in a simple way. So we're now talking to these folks about scale in the tens of thousands of units, um, including here in Barcelona where we were doing the smart city for the last couple of years. Right. It's interesting, we actually had, uh, you know, we talked orchestration with this Rakuten Symphony uh, and, and, and some of your team earlier on this show Kirk, and by the way, that 50% number outside the industry, it is really interesting, but God, it goes back to a, you know, a decade ago, you know, I said something, and I think you've been saying this too, Pat, is every company is a tech company. You know, there's not a single company on the planet that does, can't you know, improve itself through the utilization of technology, and the last year with AI has only further proliferated that. But you know, this event, right, it's focused to mobile communications, Kirk. You know, talk a little bit about Lenovo's perspective on this industry and what's happening at Lenovo specific to the telecommunication mobile space. Yeah, so I think, you know, we have been focused on the edge, as you said, for many years, and there's no greater edge than telecommunications. So we have just crossed a milestone where, uh, with Deutsche Telekom, we've had 17 million subscribers now running 2 billion 
uh, voice minutes a year on Lenovo infrastructure in a disaggregated way. So as you know, our vision is most trusted partner. This was an incredible example uh, of getting multiple vendors in the industry to take a distributed network and, and make it uh, grow at scale. So that was a really fun one. Uh, we're working with Orange now uh, to demonstrate now through their, our innovation lab that we've had for six years, how you can have a, a, a cloud network 25% lower power. Uh, we've been working with AMD on this new SC455 Edge server where we're now demonstrating uh, a 10 million user ORAN at 50% lower power. Right. So one of the other things here in Europe especially is just the whole focus on sustainability and the circular economy and everybody's got their different net zero targets. So when you walk in with a value proposition of 50% lower power, and I think you know, right now we're probably the only one in the world with this AMD-based edge server. Um, it's really getting the attention. Yeah, you made some early, uh, early bets and they're paying off, and this is also um, much more than hardware. I mean, it's, it's hardware, it's software, it's services that you're laying on top of that really for an end-to-end -end solution. But I want to I wanna drill down on some of the announcements that, that you made here. Yeah at the show, I know you love all of your announcements the same, but uh, can you talk about some of the highlights that you brought out? Sure, I mean, so, so with Deutsche Telekom, we just continue to innovate as we talked about. Uh, with Telefonica here, you know, we were running the Barcelona Smart City, so I was running around here over the last year or two with thousands of street kiosks that can do automatic traffic collision detection for faster first responder uh, access. We're helping the blind navigate the streets to know if there's bicyclists coming at them or, or hazards that are out on the street. Uh, we're having smart shoppers where you can actually dial in and have somebody taste the olives at the Bocaria market. <laughs> and if they're a good tasting olive, have them ship it to your apartment real time, but with professional shoppers that you're watching through augmented reality glasses. So Barcelona has been in a, an amazing smart city, but now we extended that to Madrid with Telefonica where, where we're using their 5G network and uh, push to talk with Motorola all the way to our edge servers where they're actually running drones and using the street cameras to detect smoke and fire, again, for faster police response. Um, so, and that's just another example where every city in the world is going to get there. And I think Spain is one of those that's on the bleeding edge of that. Just another reminder of how important this technology is and improving people's lives. You know, it's funny, I'll steal Dan's uh, comment where, where he was talking about, you know, Dan and I are working on the weekends and it's like, hey, why do we do this? It's not life or death. And then you astutely brought up, well, this technology and the implementation sometimes is life or death or, or life tra transforming. Uh, there was a compute on the edge in an ambulance in, in one of your partner's boots uh, and, and how they're cataloging the equipment that has to be in that ambulance yeah. using RFID. Yeah. And just example after example. Well, that's the thing, is like, we're working with a lot of companies, you know we have this AI innovators program where the, the challenge we're hearing is there's 16,000 or so AI startups out there. We've gone and partnered now with what we think are the 50 most compelling, built 165 certified solutions on this in various retailers. So. For example, we're running every Kroger self-checkout uh, in the United States. We expanded that into other geographies to help uh, theft and just misscanning at the edge. Right. Even working with one of the largest Pacific uh, Ocean fishing fleets to be able to measure the fish as things get dropped in, make sure they're not catching endangered species, but this is the extreme right. far edge. But you talked about software. This isn't really just all about, about the hardware server. I mean, we did an announcement on the Intel Edge Compute Platform, integrated in with our Lenovo Open Cloud Automation because people are getting things to 20, 30 store POCs and then they say, I want to go into 180 markets in the, in the world and expand to 10 or 20,000 stores, right? right? So when that happens, it's that management and orchestration. So we have an announcement with Intel on that, we have an announcement with Rakuten on that, uh, we're working with VMware on their cloud right. platform, so the software pieces of it are, are compelling and then Lenovo from a services perspective also trying to bring in the deployment because some of these people just don't have the resources to go like Lenovo into 180 markets and, and get these out into the, into the marketplace. Yeah. So, Kirk, I want to I take some time in this conversation to sort of 
go back to our, our focus from last year, you know, at our, at our keynote, at the keynote you delivered at Summit, you know, AI was kind of rising into the, the, the world. Well, I mean, 23, it was like, by the time our conference happened, you know, it had gone from like, kind of a thing when OpenAI launched to like everything. And this year we're going to unleash AI and it's going to be like AI plus everything. But, yeah. you know, I know MWC is very telco focused and we've hit on that a little bit, but you leading the whole ISG business, I mean, AI has to be one of the biggest things on your mind. Yeah. Talk a little bit about kind of the Lenovo evolution, how you've kind of, you know, taken on the challenge of shifting the company, its perception, its technology into AI, and how you're differentiating. Because I think right now, Pat, you and I have run a whole, you know, 6.5 on AI series, right. literally to just get the tech companies to come out and say, what's different? Like, okay, you make servers. How are you differentiating? How is Lenovo tackling this? Yeah, so I think, we, you know, we've, we've moved from this, the server group to the data center group to the infrastructure group, which was really a, a naming convention of knowing that most of the data is going to move to the edge. So I think we did take an early view on the, on the Think Edge, but from a from a journey perspective since 2016, I mean, we we were number 11, I think, in the world. If you look at all the ODMs and OEMs, we've grown to number three, same in storage now. Um, so AI, I think, was the next big thing. We were really excited that IDC now for the second publication has driven us from number six to number three in the world in AI. So how did we do that? Uh, a few years ago, YY, our CEO, had the vision to invest $1.2 billion. Uh, so that's nice when your CEO gives you that kind of money. We just announced another billion dollars. So really, what did we get out of that when we were investing early? Where we put in four AI innovation centers around the world in Beijing, Stuttgart, Taipei, and Raleigh, North Carolina. We were able to bring in hundreds and hundreds of ISVs, analyze what they had, see if they had an anchor tenant Right. Um, like a Kroger or a big fast food chain or a big car company, uh, and then optimize their solution around our hardware and simplify the deployment through our services. Um, so as a result of that, we have this AI innovators program, 50 ISVs, 165 solutions, all certified all the way down to the edge. So we're running you know, every Enoch gas station and United Arab Emirates, uh, as an example. Some we're doing either production or proof of concepts in more than 50% of all the fast food chains in the United States now for everything from drive-through automation to kiosks to just line and wait time management right. to safety, you know, these kind of things. So differentiating has really been how do you simplify it because you know, some of these companies may have four or five people trying to work on AI. Uh, the other thing is, I, th I think you know we have had this ODM plus model, which means all of our board development is going in-house. So we're really priding ourselves on becoming a reference design partner for the silicon teams. And when you know GTC arrives with NVIDIA here in a few weeks, uh, we'll be there with some of the kind of cutting edge reference designs, right. how to optimize into these really small form factors, because especially when you get to the edge, um, people want these to be wall mounted, shelf mounted, ceiling mounted. Uh, but they want to have all that that um, that GPU power. So at the hardware level, you know, we've worked for 18 months on like oil refinery specs for safety, for grease specs in the kitchens of some of these big fast food chains on the acoustics. So now our our products are half the acoustics of our competition, meaning you can put them into a small manager's office and still be able to do a conference call without a server screaming at you. So. All of these things fit into the edge and AI paradigm. Um, but as you know, you know, we're trying to be most trusted partner and we're trying to grow to be the largest infrastructure company in the world. I think AI and edge are going to be the two ways that uh, ultimately get us there. Yeah, the numbers speak for themselves and the investments are paying off. And you know, as analysts, we need to be very careful about absolutes, but I absolutely went on the record uh, to say that Lenovo does have the most comprehensive edge, edge solutions and you put a lot of work into it, and it's very expensive to do multiple form factors that go in multiple environments that have different dust, uh, thermal characteristics, uh, and all of this. So I wanted to do sort of a, a boomerang on, on AI. Mm -hmm. So in, in tech, very, very, if you look at history of tech, very infrequently does technologies go away, right? It's typically and, okay? When machine learning came, that doesn't mean analytics went away. When deep learning came, we still had machine learning analytics. When generative AI, we were still using everything. 
What are some of the differences with generative AI, that, that applications with your customers, or maybe some areas of heat and, and yeah. interest that, that, that you're seeing? Yeah, well it was great at our tech world we had you know, Jensen, Lisa, Sue from AMD, Pat Gelsinger, and Cristiano from Qualcomm all there. And one of the major concepts for us around AI in general is that it's not just going to live in the cloud world. I mean, we're a unique company in that about 50% of our business is in public cloud and 50% of infrastructure is on-prem. So we're quite neutral in this hybrid AI world, but we defined kind of three different kinds of AI going forward. There's obviously public AI that you get out of the public cloud, There'll be private AI or enterprise AI that you want with just your enterprise data because of sovereignty issues or, or government regulations. And then we think there'll be private AI where you know, there's things you want to keep specifically on your new AI PC sure. or your AI phone or AI tablet. So from that perspective, I think we're looking at LLMs of all sizes and as you get more and more performance in the Motorola form factor and the tablet and the PC, you're going to see more and more personal twinning of your device, right. and ultimately you're going to ask a question, you're going to want to have the contextual knowledge of what's public, what's enterprise, and what's private in the answer that you want, and you're going to want to probably know the sources of where you got that sure. answer from as well. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's, it's very interesting to see how it all kind of comes together. I know you're, you know, the Motorola, the handset business has been pretty explosive. I know that's one of your sister divisions, it's not, um, but, you know, I think it was Qualcomm's AI hub and being able to drop very quickly LLMs for developers on a device to create apps. I mean, you yeah. see how quickly this is all proliferating, but I love your point because the, the walls that need to be created between data, I mean, one, some of the biggest fails of the early LLMs was the fact that people really didn't understand like how the models were being trained and like you know you heard about companies dumping their entire business strategy plans <laughs> in to get a, can, you know, and by the way, great tool, right? I want a summary. But you don't want to use the public LLM for that. You got to use a. You want a private LLM that's been, you know, built on on, on the right governance and the right compliance and, and has guardrails to specifically be sure that it's yes, it'll help summarize, but no, it won't be used to help train a model that your competitors are are using. I mean, it's fascinating. Well, I, mean, I think here at MWC, it it is very unique for Lenovo because we're in 180 markets in the world and we have the edge to cloud or pocket to cloud as we call right. it, and we're having these AI conversations. So. You know, it's, it's great for me as the infrastructure guy who's challenging our competitors when you've had a decade-long relationship with Motorola or a two-decade-long relationship with Motorola because you're walking in and they right. understand the Lenovo culture a little bit and it's a lot easier to talk to them about infrastructure then. And that's some of the success we've seen, you know, of getting some of these large, large telecom uh, wins around the world is it started with Motorola, but you can also have an AI conversation from the largest cloud to you know, completely re-architecting their network around ORAN to what is the next generation smart device look like? How do phones, tablets, and PCs interact right. uh, in a Windows and Android ecosystem? These kind of conversations are, are have been really exciting. Yeah, absolutely. I like pocket to cloud, by the way. So no, it was good. I like that. Yeah. You know, even, even though I, we only usually like the things we create, Daniel. But I got to give Lenovo credit for that. Pocket yeah, to cloud, it works. Selfish. selfish. It does. AI it does. For all. Pocket uh, to cloud. Yes. <laughs> Well, Kirk, I think we'll be seeing you at GTC. Yes. I'm very excited to hear what you've got coming for us. And uh, yeah. well, thanks again for sitting down. You're, you know, you're one of the regulars here on the 6.5 and, and we love having you. Appreciate it, you guys. Thanks. Doing good work. Appreciate that. All right, everybody, hit that subscribe button. Join us and follow all of our coverage here at MWC 2024. And of course, follow and check out all the episodes here that we've done with Lenovo and with all the great partners here at the 6.5. But for this episode, for Patrick Moorhead and myself, it's time to say goodbye. We'll have to see you later.